good morning. Welcome to It's Your Call. It's Friday, January 10th, 2014. My name is Mark Phoenix. Welcome to today's call. Glad everybody's on the call today. Record group here already this morning. So good job, everybody. And uh, I appreciate, again, all of your questions and your special requests and your comments sent to questions at coldwellbankerprime.com. And we will continue that, and I'll answer those as soon as I can every week. So I appreciate all the questions and the role play suggestions, and we are certainly going to do uh, some role play a little bit. We've got some several in the news items to get through this morning. And uh, one of those things, uh, if, if people are looking for a, a blog item, uh, a timely blog topic uh, to begin the new year with, I think everybody in central New York and the capital region each can identify with the, the what, is, what is it called, the polar vortex that we've all been battling and dealing with that has finally lifted out of the northeast. And, uh, but one of the things that I think that a lot of people might uh, really, uh, I, I suppose, identify with uh, is how to keep our, our, our furry friends warm during this, this period of time. That's something that a lot of us can identify with, certainly. And uh, so I think that's something that uh, you could write a blog about. I think it would be timely. I think it certainly would be well-received. It certainly would capture some attention and bring it to your agent website. So that might be something that you could blog about and uh, see, what, uh, see what comes of that. But uh, uh, you know something? One of the things I teased in the... Um, in the uh, uh, video teaser email this morning was agent safety. And this is really a result of something that uh, uh, came up uh, over the last week or so in one of the offices in the capital region where two female agents went to a particular listing, uh, or I shouldn't say a listing, a, a home at the request of the homeowner under the pretense of doing a comparative market analysis and a listing presentation. Unfortunately, they were met with uh, inappropriate behavior. There were explicit uh, photos that were hanging on the wall, and these two uh, female agents certainly did the right thing by excusing themselves from the premises. So I would caution you to make sure that you qualify all all of your listing appointments. Uh, make sure if it's if it's a, a, someone who's requesting a, a CMA from you, ask them where they got your name and number. If they were referred to you, who referred them uh, to you? And uh, in this particular case, uh, this particular homeowner was actually surfing the internet uh, and identifying younger. Uh, female uh, agents. And uh, so like I say, uh, be mindful of those things and, and check that out if you would. Uh, uh, just uh, your, your safety is paramount to everything else. And uh, if you'd like to learn about more about safety and real estate, uh, Coble Banker Prime Properties has in its open house uh, Accelerate training module, that's the new agent training module, uh, a safety element. And uh, so talk to your manager, talk to your uh, Central New York uh, trainer, Kathy, and certainly Shane in the Capital Region. Uh, they can talk to you more about that and bring you through that training. Uh, but if you'd like more on that, again, talk to your manager, email me, anything like that you can do, and, and we'll get you that information. And, of course, one of the bigger news that's, that's really real estate-related uh, is is fixed rates uh, on mortgages. They have started the year higher, and uh, there's an article that was delivered this past Monday right to your email. It's found in the Prime Properties Daily E-News that we send out every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday mornings. And uh, Freddie Mac recently released the results of its primary mortgage market survey, and it showed that average fixed rate mortgage rates are continuing to edge higher as we emerge out of the gate here in the new year. In fact, uh, from our friends and colleagues at SEFQ Mortgage Services, uh, all of the rates uh, for new purchase mortgages are higher as we enter the new year. In fact, uh, FHA, as of this morning, is at 4 and a quarter percent uh, and that is a 30-year fixed-rate FHA. And 30-year conventional fixed-rate is 4.625%. Uh, and 15-year conventional fixed-rate is at 3.625%. And all of that, I would say, uh, is – let me just look real quick here – 
I would say that generally that's up between uh, an eighth and a, and a quarter percent depending upon which mortgage product you're looking at and uh, over the last 30 days. So certainly the, the migration of fixed rates uh, and, and mortgage interest rates are, are nudging higher. And, and again, as we've talked about on several occasions on It's Your Call, that uh, uh, this is an indication of a strengthening economy that's gaining momentum. But don't, uh, don't fear this, because mortgage interest rates are not rising in a vacuum, of course. Uh, the, the economy, from, a, from an employment point of view, uh, is, is strengthening and, and gaining steam. So this is, this is natural and it's normal. But it, it would be a suitable blog topic for you, or perhaps uh, a, a suitable uh, topic to dedicate to one of your uh, customizable agent website uh, content pieces and make people aware. Engage people in conversation as you visit with them uh, in open house. And uh, so, uh, but it's certainly something that, uh, that you should be aware of. Also, uh, I, I was thinking about, I was talking with an agent just yesterday in one of our offices in the capital region, and we were talking about uh, how some agents are a little, uh, I, I suppose, anxious about beginning the new year. If they've had a great year last year, you know, the expectation might be that the pressure they're feeling is that, oh, my goodness, they have to do that all over again. Uh, or if they didn't have quite the year that they had hoped or planned on having, uh, starting out with, with some humble confidence, it, it can be a little daunting. So think about uh, uh, maybe prospecting, but one of the easiest ways to approach beginning the new year is to rely upon your past clients if you are an experienced agent. If you're newer to the business, certainly your centers of influence should come into play. And think about it. You know, your past clients people who are included in your centers of influence, assuming that, that you've, you've done a great job for your past clients uh, and people who are found in your centers of influence, those are people who like you, who, who want to see you successful, and generally speaking, all things being equal, want to do something to contribute toward your success. And if you think about it, the average person knows about 250 people. And while there may not be 250 people, say, for example, on somebody's Christmas card list, the average person knows that many people. So think about it. If, if you maybe have uh, 100 past clients, if you're an experienced agent, uh, times 250 people, you're going to have and be exposed to upwards of 25,000 people from which to draw in terms of potential future business, whether they be uh, buyer clients or, or seller clients. If you're new to the business, you want to make sure that you are creating a top-of-mind awareness with the people who are in your centers of influence and be a true resource for them. For example, what I mean by that specifically is, is maybe making a phone call announcing uh, about the, the slight upward migration of mortgage interest rates. Or, for example, the popular refinance option is the 15-year mortgage interest rate, which is at 3.625 right now. That's still a very low rate, and so there might be some refinance uh, uh, capabilities out there. And you could save some uh, of, of your past clients or people in your centers of influence some real money if refinancing is, is an option for them. So consider that as you, you come out of the gate in the new year. And uh, you know something? Uh, I, I was thinking about uh, how you could also utilize your agent website uh, a little bit more, uh, uh, I suppose, uh, strongly as you approach the new year. And I'm, I'm just wondering, I was just thinking about things that would be of, of general interest that would help people discover your agent website through Google. And of course, we've talked about extensively in the past on It's Your Call about the importance of using a minimum, a minimum of 18 high-resolution photos on your listings. And of course, uh, in, in your online office, in your website wizard, uh, the property photos, you can have as many as 50 high-resolution photos. That's going to influence Google. Using video in your website, that's going to influence video. Uh, excuse me, that's going to influence Google. And of course, blogging uh, uh, maybe a couple times a week, that will also influence Google and, and take note of your agent website. But there's also things that are going on in the community that will contribute if you blog about them or dedicate one of the customizable agent sections of your agent website. Uh, and to talk about, for example, what about uh, what about schools? 
uh, people who uh, are, are looking for schools. For many people with school-age children, identifying schools, a school district or a specific elementary school, for example, is very important, and they Google school names. So what if you were to create a blog around maybe a success story at a local elementary school or uh, maybe a school ranking, say, for example? Uh, so it, it will help you increase what we call organic search traffic. And it's a significant opportunity that's going to exist for you this year and by, by highlighting your, your agent website. And there's also things that are going on in the community itself. For example, is there a, maybe a new shopping center or a new strip mall or a new store that is being proposed? Or what about a new housing development that you could talk about? Maybe glean some and talk about some details uh, within a blog or, one, again, one of the sections, customizable sections of your agent website. So th those are things that will uh, cause uh, people to take notice of your website through Google and, of course, draw traffic to your agent website. And again, uh, if, if they're thinking about these things, they're going to be naturally inclined to uh, uh, talk about real estate and engage you. Uh, once they see that you're a resource for that type of information, you're going to be uh, utilizing and leveraging the, the power of your website the way all of your competitors just can't as much as they'd like to. So take, uh, take a look at that. If you'd like more information on that, this is actually an article uh, that I think is worth a read. Again, it was delivered to your email last Friday morning on January 3rd uh, in the Prime Properties uh, Daily E-News. Again, the, the, uh, the uh, headline was uh, Making Your Content Experience Work for Future Buyers, and I think that that uh, is, is well worth the read. Some of the other things that you could talk about is uh, maybe cleaning gutters. Of course, how many houses have you driven by over the last week or two in particular, gang, that uh, have those icicles that are pouring over uh, rain gutters because the, the rain gutters were, were clogged. Of course, cleaning gutters at that point is going to be pretty, pretty difficult to do. Uh, but uh, what about other things, that simple tips like, for example, uh, uh, this time of year in particular where you're wanting uh, people who have ceiling fans, uh, what about uh, switching the orientation of ceiling fans in a clockwise direction that forces heat down off of the ceiling? That might be another quick tip. And uh, of course, you could talk about programmable thermostats and, and the amount of energy that they could serve. You could Google that topic and come up with uh, some resources there. And, uh, but uh, ice dams is another thing that's another common problem this time of year, in particular with the, the harsh, harsh weather that we've been having. So uh, th those types of things all will contribute to uh, driving traffic to your agent website because people are going to consider you to be not just the real estate information officer for your, your, your area, but also a true genuine resource in general. So again, use, use your agent website in a way that your competitors just can't, again, as much as they'd like to. And also, uh, another true story here uh, as it relates to uh, technology, the Internet, and social media. Be careful what you like on Facebook or like. I'm not talking about like a personal like, but when you click the link, you know, I like that. Be very mindful about what you're liking, air quotes, in social media. And for example, uh, there's going to give you two examples actually. The first example is, you know, for example, when you have uh, – a great transaction or a great working relationship with another agent from another company. And they, they, they draw you to their social media page and they say, hey, hey, like me. You like working with me, don't you? And if you don't have your wits about you, you just might, uh, you know, just because you're a charitable person, might like that other agent from this other real estate company. Well, here's the downside to that. You might be in the future going on a competitive listing appointment and that agent might be one of the people that you're competing with for that listing. And that agent might say to Mr. and Mrs. Seller, hey, what other agents are you interviewing for the job of selling your home? And, and they might say, well, you know, I'm interviewing Mark Phoenix from Cobalt Banker. And say, oh, yeah, I know Mark. We've worked on a lot of transactions together. And, you know, one of the interesting things is that Mark liked me on, on my real estate page on my social media outlet. So, geez, if, if Mark Phoenix from Cobalt Banker liked me, there must be something special about me that Mark doesn't have a Cobalt Banker. So savvy and particularly tech-savvy agents are using the likes on social media in perhaps what might be termed clandestine ways. So be very mindful of that. The other thing 
is uh, we had a situation just last week where one of the agents in one of our offices liked a popular morning radio show that features off-color humor. And the seller Googled the agent and said, you know what, I know I had an appointment with you, but I see that you like this, this, uh, uh, this radio show that uh, deals in humor that I don't support or appreciate, and uh, I don't see the point in us getting together. So they made a judgment call based upon that. So be very careful as to what you're liking in social media. And toward that end, it might be valuable for you to Google yourself. Uh, And you might be surprised by what you find. And uh, the lesson here in the modern day is that uh, there are transparencies that have never been before experienced, especially today. It's becoming more pervasive, especially as we join more social networks. And and we're going to have to, as real estate agents, come to accept this level of transparency. Uh, And, of course, we should use this transparency to our advantage as real estate agents. And, again, stocking your agent website with all of the resources that both buyers and sellers would want to see to make a decision to either buy or sell right now. And uh, so, uh, but you know something, I also promised you some information about how to make this new year the best year ever as we emerge into the new year. And if you haven't, again, made a business plan, make a, a great appointment with your trainer, with your coach, with your branch manager, and think big. Build your business plan with great detail on, on where you've been last year and where you'd like to be this year. And, and then break down some daily tasks that will be required to get you there. And I'm really talking about prospecting and lead follow-up. But you know something? A business plan, it's, it's a roadmap of where you want to go. And, uh, you know, and don't be afraid of using uh, Primey Synergy as, as your customer relationship management tool. It's a great tool, and uh, it's going to allow you to create some systems that are going to help you manage your business more easily and, of course, uh, be more efficient at the same time. And, uh, but again, you know what? Uh, prospect every day. Lead follow Be very diligent about that. But you know something? How used to are you and I going into, say, even, for example, the big box retailers and, and finding things on our own or going to the self-service checkout counter? And, and of course, all of us, uh, very few of us in the call, I, perhaps, uh, could remember when people used to pump our gas at the gas station. So we've been inclined to accept uh, a, a lower level of service almost everywhere. But real estate's different, gang. Sellers and buyers alike, they, they pay us thousands of dollars to do what we do. So I want you to be, be exemplary of, of uh, leadership in real estate. This is Coldwell Banker Prime Properties. There is a higher standard of customer and client level services. We, we offer training that no other company has and they're not able to offer that. So there's a higher level of expectation for delivering good quality customer and client level services. So uh, there's an article that was delivered to, again, your Prime Properties email this morning in your Prime Properties daily e-news, and that headline is called Basic Training, Your Best Year Ever. And make sure that you read this, and and, uh, one of the last suggestions it makes is be legendary in your customer service. And I think that's a a great word, Uh, and I think that article is certainly worth uh, a read. So uh, make sure that you uh, check that out, and uh, and, and I hope that you uh, take some of the suggestions here this morning and actually put them to good use. So it is time for role play this morning, and I'm just wondering who would like to step up to the plate, who's on deck this morning. I want to uh, give a special welcome to Joanne. Welcome to the call. And Donna, it's good to see you on the call. And, and I think that uh, uh, one uh, uh, congratulatory note is absolutely necessary this morning. Kathy Franco from Central New York, she graduated. Congratulations there, Kathy. We're all hey, proud of you. Hey. Fantastic job, and we all knew that you could do it. And you, oh, you've thank got a, you. you got I'll a great, do to Kathy. 
Yeah, yeah. Well, you know, she's a great trainer, isn't she? And you've got a great team that you serve on, and everybody is standing with you, Kathy, shoulder to shoulder. So now that you've uh, graduated from the the cap, the Central New York Training Center, uh, you're 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 in great company, and uh, so I'm very very proud of you. So uh, congratulations to you. We're all proud of you. So, and uh, so who would like to role play this morning? Hi, Mark. This is Joanne DePaulo. Hey, Joanne. Happy New Year to you. How are you? I'm good. How are you? Happy New Year to you. I am well. Thank you very much. So what's on your mind this morning? Um, you know, I don't have anything in particular really for role play. I was wondering, you had said that you had gotten some suggestions. Yes, and one of those suggestions that I got this week, uh, it's, it's curious that you should ask that question, or I guess uh, uh, appropriate you should ask, is that uh, people who are uh, prospecting today, after the new year, they are getting a variation on the objection, hey, I want to wait until after the holidays are over. And the variation is, is you know what, I want to wait until springtime. And, uh-huh. uh, of course, uh, we all know and, and we can all take heart that the days, in fact, are getting longer. And so that means that springtime is just around the corner. So maybe you would like to role play that uh, with me in some way. And, and you tell me, sure. would you like to play the agent or would you prefer to maybe play the uh, seller? I, I'm going to play the seller. Thank you. All but, right. That, uh, that's no that problem. great. Okay. So uh, I'll say, you know, ring, ring. Hello. Oh, hi. I'm, I'm, I'm calling uh, about the home that was offered for sale. Is, is this Joanne? Yes, it is. Oh, hi, Joanne. My name is Mark. I sell a lot of real estate in the area with Coldwell Banker, and I, I don't know if you figured it out or not, but your home came up on our computer system this morning as what we call in the business an expired listing. And I was calling to ask, when do you plan on interviewing the right agent for the job of selling your home? Oh, uh, you know, Mark, we're, we're, um, we had it on for a while, and then we took it off for the holidays, and... Um, you know the holidays are done, but I think I think we're going to wait till the weather warms up, and we can start bringing more people through. Ah, okay, yeah, and it's been pretty cold recently, hasn't it, Joanne? It has. Sub zeros, they call that a, a, a polar vortex. I hope we're done with that for the winter, aren't you? I know, me too. I can, I, I tell you, it was hard to stay warm during that period. But uh, hey, you know, let me ask you something. I, I noticed that your home was on the market for it looks like six months. Yeah. And uh, I'm, I'm curious. I know that you've got some kind of plan in mind. Uh, when your home sells, where are you planning to move next? Um, we're 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 hoping to go where the weather's warmer. We're going to try and go down to South Carolina, but um, we don't have anything definite yet we haven't found a house or anything so but we're we're kind of anxious to get down there oh, okay so i see so so you really want to to lose this this cold weather completely go to a no warmer kidding, climate yeah. we're, we're going to yeah. lose you completely well, that, that's that's sad for us but i can understand <laughs> it, it's exciting for you are you excited about that move very very if we ever get there yes good for you good for you joanne now i, I ideally speaking if you if you if you could pick a time and a date to be down in the Carolinas, when would that be? Uh, I think our original plan was to be down there for the summer, you know, the latest. Okay, so this coming summer? Yes. Okay, all right, interesting. So, so okay, th- we're, we're just about in mid-January here. Okay, I'm just, I'm just kind of calculating the timeline that's necessary to accomplish your goal in my head. Okay, and, you know, as I'm looking at, at your home here, Joanne, uh, my goodness, it, it appears to be a very nice home. I, I see look at those bedrooms. Thank and you. Looking at the at the the pictures and color here, it looks to be a makes a very nice presentation. And I'm just curious, uh, from your your point of view, what do you think stopped your home from selling this time around? Um, you know, I I don't know. We were we were pretty happy with our agent, but at okay. the time and. She did open houses and whatever, but there just was not a lot of traffic, and we kind of chalked it up to it being the holidays. So Ah, okay, uh, okay. So you, know. uh, you were initially happy with your agent just to, to reset that, and, and yet there, that whatever agent that, did, uh, d- uh, that agent did did not create the necessary traffic to, to bring a buyer through who made, made you an offer. How many showings do you think you had? Oh, she, she probably showed it, I don't know, maybe 10 times. Mm-hmm. Okay. And, and any know, offers? Sort of, no, um, we came close, but no, we didn't. But, you know, we were, we were pretty happy with her. We're probably just going to, 
you know, go with her again, I'm thinking. Okay. But we just told her we were going to wait until the weather got a little warmer. Sure, sure. Springtime, as, as you indicated a moment ago. And, and uh, How did you happen to pick the last agent you listed with? Uh, she was referred to us by her neighbor. Oh, interesting. Okay, great. Okay. And, and uh, what did that agent do, Joanne, that you liked the best? Uh, well, this was our, our first time trying to sell a home, and she seemed to be upbeat, and, um, you know, she showed the house, and she had open houses, and we saw it on the Internet, and we saw it in the paper, so we kind of felt that she was doing as much as she could to try and get it sold, but, okay. you know, like I said, unfortunately, they just weren't a lot of people looking at the time. Sure. Well, you know, that's interesting that you should bring that up because uh, the, their, uh, our, our office here in, in, the, in the area had, had their best month of the year in December. Isn't that something? Really? Really. That so, is interesting. Uh, d- December actually was, was a much busier month than, than some, some people planned for. I know some, some sellers were pleasantly surprised, and, and of course, buyers who ended up in buying uh, just before Christmas, of course, I think that they probably got their qu- Christmas wish and holiday wish too, right? I, I guess so, yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> that what is you, interesting, though. What do you feel, Joanne, that, that your last agent should have done for you? Um, you know, I... I guess maybe she could have had other uh, real estate agents come through and take a look at it because I've heard from a few people that that's an option too to have, and that's something she she never did. I mean, that may be something that could have helped, I guess. Sure. Maybe networked with some of the agents that uh, she knows works in that area in that price range in an effort to create some top-of-mind awareness to to generate some showings, hopefully, right? Yeah. I, I guess that probably could have helped. Yeah, I don't think it could have hurt anyway. You're right. And, and uh, yeah. you know, Joanne, what would you expect reasonably from the next agent that you choose to sell your home? Well, hopefully to sell it. Um, okay, get the job done for yeah. you, in other words. Yeah, yeah. So, so you can go to a warmer climate, which, is, of course, that's yeah. what this has been all about from the beginning, right? Yes, very true, okay. yep. All right. Now, you'd indicated a moment or two ago that you might consider – um, relisting with your previous agent. And I'm, I'm just wondering uh, if, if you've really made a firm decision along those lines because I would like to apply for the job of selling your home. Are you familiar with the techniques that I use to get property sold? Um, no, I can't say that we are. Um, you know, we really never thought about changing, to be honest sure. with you. We just assumed that that's where we were going to stay. And Sure. Well, what would be the best time, Joanne, to get together and show you uh, how I can help you turn the page of your life and and get down to the Carolinas so you can warm up? Um, You know, let me talk to my husband about it and see what he thinks. And, um, you know, it's kind of a big decision because we we really feel committed to her. Sure, and and I understand that. And, And yet, Joanne, it's a decision which must be made based upon your needs, correct? Yeah, yeah. And right now, you, re- you really need to get your home sold so you can turn the page of your life and, and start your, your life anew down in the Carolinas, right? Yeah, that is true. That's true. So, so what's your calendar look like? Uh, how, how's uh, maybe tomorrow afternoon at 1.30? Uh, well, you know what? Can I have my husband call you? Oh, sure. There's, there's no problem with that, and, and I can leave my contact information with you. And, and yet what we can do, uh, because uh, this time of year, because once the holidays are over, there's a spike in activity here in January because people are getting back to their, to their normal routines and lives. My, my yeah. calendar's filling up pretty good here. So why don't we do this? Why don't we, do, uh, why don't we set a tentative time, say, for 1.30 tomorrow afternoon, because uh, at least you'd be in my calendar at that point. If after talking to your husband we need to change that, we can always do that. How's that sound? Sound. That, that sounds good. We okay, can do that. Right. So I'm going to pause the role play for just a second there. We've got about two minutes remaining in our call today. I want to wind back for just one or two steps. Uh, Joanne, would you uh, maybe uh, give me the objection uh, that uh, you want to wait until spring? Sure. Okay, so uh, because yeah. we, 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 we got so caught up in this role play, we went in another direction, and, and I went right along with you. So, okay. <laughs> so uh, <laughs> if, if you would. So, uh, so you know, let me ask you something. Are you, familiar, are you familiar, Joanne, with the techniques that I use to get home sold? Um, I'm not. Uh, okay. You know, I think, again, Mark, you know what? I think we're just going to hold out until the weather gets a little nicer. Understood. Uh, Understood. And, and I can't blame you from your point of view. The last couple of weeks especially have been quite harsh, uh, right? Yeah. 
Definitely. And, and, and yet what you may not realize is that once the holidays are over, and even in the coldest of temperatures, there are buyers who still have to move because they have sold their home. And of course, maybe if they're renting, their lease is coming up for expiration soon. And so typically, there's a spike in activity just around this time of year, uh, right here in the month, as we look toward mid-January, as people assume their normal routines. And, and in order for you to benefit from that spike in activity, your home has to be on the market and of course if it's if it's not available for people to see you're going to miss out on that of course that's not a position that you want to be in is it um no but yet i don't think we're ready to to jump back into it it's so much work and i you know as anxious as we are to get down you know to where we're going it's um i I still think maybe waiting until the warmer weather may be a, a good choice for us Sure. And, and, and that, that's, that's certainly your prerogative to do if that's something you really want to do. And, and yet you may not realize that the month of January is traditionally the biggest corporate transferee month. And, and since most can't wait until spring, again, you've got to be on the market to capture this type of buyer. And I've I, I got to believe that if there's a clear benefit to you and your family putting your home on the market now as opposed to waiting to spring. We should get together tomorrow afternoon at 1.30 and discuss it specifically, shouldn't we? Uh, maybe, maybe, I mean, I guess it couldn't hurt. Sure. And, and, of course, I'd rather you make a decision based upon what you know at that point rather than maybe what you may not realize at this point in the process, right? Yeah. If we, now, if we get together tomorrow can, is it, and we decide we still want to wait till spring, is it something where we could – you know, talk about it tomorrow and just... Certainly, and, and explore that more completely so you make a, a qualified decision. And, of course, I, I want you comfortable and confident in that decision as we move forward, as we work together. And, of course, that's, that's what you want as, as well, isn't it? Yes, very okay, much. Great. Thank All you. All right, well, I'll see you tomorrow afternoon at one thirty, And uh, I'll tell you what, would you like me to give your husband a call ahead of our meeting so I can introduce myself to him at least over the telephone? That would be great. Okay, and I'll take that that contact information from Joanne. And if this were a real live situation where I set an appointment for tomorrow, I would jump and segue directly into the pre-qualification of the listing appointment script, wouldn't I? Yes. Yes, okay. So everybody give Joanne a round of applause. That that was fantastic, Joanne. Good job. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you for stepping up off deck to to role play with me this morning, and uh, I appreciate that. And so... Here we are, uh, and it's our 855 takeaway item time, and uh, this is actually a special request uh, from a year and a half ago, and since we are recording these calls now, uh, the person in central New York who specifically requested the retelling of this takeaway item, this one's for you, who uh, elected to be anonymous. So uh, here it is. I'm, I'm wondering, gang, if you ever heard the story of the billionaire who threw a dinner party. You ever hear that story before? It, it seems that what this billionaire did was he invited all of his loved ones, all of his friends and neighbors and colleagues to his house, and as, at this point, he, it was really a summary of his life. He had reached the end of his career. And he gathered these people together for the sole purpose that evening of giving away his wealth. And there was one catch, though. He had filled the deep end of his swimming pool with ominous and hungry-looking alligators. And he told the assembled crowd that he would give his house or his land or his money to anyone who jumps into the deep end of the pool and successfully swims to the other end. So this was really a lesson in courage, you might imagine, and the kind of courage that's necessary to succeed in business. Well... After a few minutes, there wasn't anybody who took this rich billionaire up on his offer, so the crowd began to walk toward the house to take part in a great feast when all of a sudden, a great splash was heard coming from the pool, and the crowd turned to see and discovered one brave man swimming furiously to get to the deep end of the pool to the other end. Well, he barely made it to the other end of the pool, and he jumped out escaping any harm at all. Well, the billionaire approached this courageous man and, and offered a hearty congratulations. He said, quote, you've demonstrated great courage. What would you like? Would you like my house, my land, or all of my money? Well, the wet and nervous man gasped for air, saying, 
I'll tell you in a minute. First thing I want to know is, who the heck pushed me into the deep end of the pool to begin with? <laughs> so, well, sometimes we all benefit from being pushed. And what do you have to do this week here in the new year to push yourself into the deep end of your business, to grow in skill and swell and ability? And it all begins with one solid step in the right direction. I want you to have a, a courageous week this week. I want you to do the right thing for you and your business today. And if you're uncertain what that right thing is, it's often the most difficult thing that's set before you. So make sure as you survey your business that you're doing the thing that you don't want to do. Typically, it's the thing you ought to be doing today. So make sure that you're watching today's tip every Monday through Friday. That's found in the office, excuse me, the company communication section in online office in the communication center. And today's tip is that we have to interview one more agent before we make a decision. So check that out today. Make sure, if you haven't had the opportunity, that you watch the recorded webinar that's entitled New Year's Resolutions or Decisions. And make sure that you continue to send me your questions and your role play suggestions and even your 855 takeaway item special requests. I'll honor those as best that I can. My name is Mark Phoenix. Have a great week, gang, and I'll talk with you next time. Thanks, Mark.